Hi guys, it's Emily from Novel Novels and welcome to today's video. This is my journey with the Brontes. Now, what is my favourite book of all time? Yes, it's Wuthering Heights. Who is my favourite author of all time? Yes, it's Emily Bronte. Which of my favourite Victorian family? The Brontes. So I thought I would talk to you all about the books that I've read by the Brontes and why I love the Brontes. Now, I have read all of the main Bronte novels, but as of the time of filming this, I've discovered that two of them I've given up to the charity shops because I didn't think I liked them enough to keep them. Since doing this, I have now added those two books to my Amazon wish list. I've also added the Wordsworth Classic Edition of Jane Eyre because I do not like my copy of it and I want all my copies to be the Jane, the Wordsworth Classic Editions. So I think on payday I may be get, doing a bit of a treat and getting myself these books in the Wordsworth Classic Edition because that's the edition that I'm collecting and I'm now discovering a love to, of all my books matching. What have you done to me, Booktube? You've changed me completely. Now, I love the Brontes. As you all know, I'm named after Emily Bronte. I've since discovered this year that she was Emily Jane Bronte. I'm Emily Jane Novell. So I've grown up knowing that. I grew up knowing that my sister, Charlie, aka Charles, Charlie Brooke, aka Pitchler's mum, is named after Charlotte Bronte. Our sister, Vicky, is Victoria Anne, aka Anne Bronte. So we all have that connection, that link. So I've grown up knowing about the Brontes. As a family, we are such a literature. My mum's side of the family, the Thomas side, are very literature based. Our nan, my nan grew up talking about the Moors. She'd been, she'd been evacuated before. We, we grew up knowing literature quite a lot. She grew up reading us poems. So to me, poetry and literature is something that I've grown up with and it's something I'm now passing on to my children. They know about books. They know about how important it is and they know I'm named after Emily Bronte. It's, it's something that's going to be ingrained into them. I want, despite the changes in culture, I feel that literature is so important and reading will never go amiss. Now, I have another love reason why, why I've got such passionate memories of Wuthering Heights, why I will love that, that side of Bronte's as well, is that as a child, we went to Yorkshire. We went to stay in this big mansion. Now, I, we are, like many children, we didn't have as many holidays as, we, as other people. We didn't go abroad or anything like that. And most of our holidays were down in Devon. But this one year, we went to Yorkshire and we stayed in this big mansion and this, like, not mansion, but this big old house. I remember, I don't remember details. My brother was little. I was probably only about nine or ten at the time. And we had another family stay with us and we went there. I remember the moor so clearly. I remember how dark and mysterious it was, but how beautiful it was. It was the first time I ever tried mint chocolate chip ice cream. I remember going down to the village and the village had a pond in it. She sounds really silly how I remember that. And trying mint chocolate chip ice cream and loving that. I remember my sister Charlie getting chased by a ram, which was hilarious. It's something we've never let her live down. But I remember that. So that to me is where I would, me and Charlie were talking earlier, that I would dream to go back to Yorkshire. I would love to visit where the Brontes were. I'd love to visit their museum. I'd love to know more about them. Now, last year, I read all of the Bronte books. Like I said, I'm going to be going re-getting them. So I'll tell you about my star ratings and everything in a minute. So that was the Bronte project last year. I have since got some poetry books, some other books on the Brontes, and I'd like to talk about them in a second. But the Brontes mean a lot to me. The fact that we're all named after them. The fact that I've got my jumper, my Jane A jumper that Charlie got me for my birthday. I am no, uh, no bird no, and no net ensnares me. I will never be ensnared. I will never be told to be doing it. I am a bit of a rebel in the fact you tell me to do something. I'll do, you tell me I can't do something, I'll darn well prove you wrong. I love that Wuthering Heights because to me it's my favourite book of all time because it does have that dark gothic era, that dark gothic side. I am the little bit of a devil inside. You will sound nice, but I have the devil in me as well. And that's why I love the dark side of it. I love the dark Gothic book. I love the fact that it's in the wild moors, that Heathcliff, he's such a baddie, but there's, he's a lovable baddie. I always used to go for the baddies. I love that lovable rogue side of him. I love that he loved, uh, he loved Cathy, but it was a wrong kind of love and their relationship and all the fighting and all, oh, it's dark. Mum, 
Wuthering Heights is a Marmite book, you either love it or you hate it, but I will forever to this day love it. It's my favourite book, it will be. A sneaky peek, if, you hadn't, if I hadn't told you, which I probably have, we are, will be rereading Wuthering Heights for October this year. Me and Kate Howe are going to run another read-along of it. I would like to see if there's DVD on or like a Wuthering Heights film. Let me know, by the way, in comments below if you know anything. But I will be searching for that in advance and I want to be celebrating Emily Bronte this year and celebrating Wuthering Heights this year. So let's get on and let's tell you the books that I've read and the books I would like to read. So obviously the first Wuthering Heights book, I'm telling you the order that I've read them in, is Wuthering, is the Wuthering Heights. First book ever by the Bronte's. I've got this copy, which is the rep backs from rep because there was a sticker on one of my other books that I took off. But this is a beautiful words about the classic edition of it. It is beautiful. It's quite a short book, actually. I didn't think it was this short, so I don't know whether this one is the wrong copy. I don't know about that, but this is one copy I've got of it. My words of classic edition, which I don't love as much. Then the lovely Becca from Becca's Bookshelf sent me this copy, which would be the copy I'll be reading from this year, which is my Penguin Classics, Pen my Clothbound Classics edition. What I love about these is that it has got, and I would love to show you, it's got pictures. Oh, Wuthering Heights novel. This is two volumes. It's three volumes. No wonder why I've got that copy, which is, shouldn't have been, which is wrong, because it's three novels of it. I thought that looked wrong, so I'm not happy with that. I'm not happy with the fact that I bought that edition, but this is a big, chunky book. It's the writing in it. Oh, my God, look how beautiful it is. I've got the fact that I've got Becca's note on it. Look at the beautiful end pages. I've got this little penguins, like classics bit that came with it. It is the most gorgeous book ever, and I love it. So, yes, that was the first book. Five stars all the way. It will always be five stars. I don't even know why I bother rating it. Then last year, I read for the second time, Jane Eyre. So I've read this twice. This is five stars as well. Thoroughly, thoroughly loved it. So the first time I read it was after that book. And then I reread it for Victoria with, with Kate Howe and a big group of us. And it was, oh. The second time I read it, I got more out of it. So I'm wondering if reading Rothering Heights again this year, I'll get a load more out of it. Thoroughly loved Jane Eyre. It's one of the best books. This is by far Charlotte Bronte's one amazing book. To me, her other books are not as good, but I'll discuss that in a minute because at the end of showing you the videos, I'll t show you the books I've read, I will tell you who my favourite Bronte is and the, my order of the Brontes. Then I read Villette, which I only rated it three stars. That was my second book. And this is set in, I think it's Prague. And this is shot, this is her, she has a lovely character, but there is a leading lady, I cannot remember her name, but Lucy Bell, Lucy Bell, Lucy Bell, I think is the lead character in Villette. I, looking back, I enjoyed that more than I thought I would, but it was definitely very different from Jane Eyre and very different from the other Bronte books I'd read. And it was set in abroad and this girl, and she, it's so much, from what I believe, Villette echoes Jane Eyre, Charlotte's experiences when she went over there. She went to Brussels and she stayed with some people and a lot of the, her references there now relate to it. So the more I'm reading a, a book, a non-fiction book about Charlotte Bronte, I am learning why I need to go back and reread Villette because I think I'll get more out of it this second time. So that's another reason I've got to get it. So that will probably be the next one I jump on and get. Then I read one of my favourite books, The Tenant of Welfare Hall. I read this with Tom from Tom Reads Things. It was four stars, but it was a top end four stars. I loved the book Ten of Welfare Hall. It's my first Anne Bronte book and it is done so powerfully. It is a powerful book and it's set and it's got violent and stuff and it's got the darker side, but it's got the lighter side and it's Hellington, Helen Huntington. I didn't get into it at the start because I didn't realise there was two narratives and I think looking back I need to reread this one as well because I think I'll get more out of it but it's like she's hiding in Wildfire Hall and oh my goodness it's such dark and social and it's got social conventions in it it's got she really broke tides when she wrote this she really broke the boundaries she challenged it she talked about psychological abuse from husbands she had the leading lady was strong-willed there is so much power and amazingness in this book I thoroughly loved it and looking back I definitely need to reread this 
So if I get time this year, I might for October reread that. I think I think that's going to be my one to reread. If I don't reread Bill it anyway. Then I read The Professor, which is a male's take on it. It's for her first time she writes in the narrative of a male, and she writes about the professor. Charlotte Bronte wrote that one. Again, I only wrote that rated that three stars. I will need to rebuy that. I will need to buy that again because I think for me. I need to get more out of it now that I know more about Charlotte Bronte and why she wrote the way she did. But I definitely think, to me, looking back, I would probably rate The Professor after Villette. But at the time, I thought Villette was worse than The Professor. But like I said, now I'm re finding out more about Charlotte and why she wrote the way she wrote. I'm thinking I definitely want to get to Villette first and reread that. Then I read Shirley. I read that for Victoria. It was my last Charlotte Bronte's works and it was a talk about a woman of independent means I rated this three stars again but this is not about Shirley it's actually about another character it's actually more about Caroline her best friend and that part is interesting I struggle with this one I probably still will but I got this beautiful edition from the lovely Gaia from Gaia Guy Athena and this is a beautiful copy so I'm, it's one I'm glad I kept and it's definitely another one I need to reread it was a great book for Victoria, and it's one that I definitely think I got more out of it that, the more I knew about the Brontes. Now, the last of the main novels of the Brontes that I read was Agnes Grey. Again, I read it for Victoria. I've already read it with Berna and the lovely, I'm trying to think of the name, Naomi. We read this, and this was five stars. This is one of my top books. I thoroughly loved it. It's a nice short, Penguin's back, nice short words, both classic edition. It's beautiful, and this is this is basically it's almost like an autobiography because it's Anne's time when she was a governess, which again I'm reading about in the book, and this is fascinating. This is really interesting. This talks about the work of being a governess, and it's got romance. It's personal. It, the fact that it's so personal to Anne makes it even more special, and I thoroughly love this. This is one of the best books. Then the last book that I have already read of this, and that's um, Emily, one of my shortest Emily's poetry book which again I rated five stars. Now yes I love Jane Eyre yes it's again I think for me if I'm just going to rate the books in my own personal order it would be Wuthering Heights, Jane Eyre, then the ten, then Agnes Grey. They're the three orders but in general if I was to rate my sister the sisters works I would rate Emily and Charlotte but the fact that I'm reading about them, in their literary standards, I would say it's Emily and Charlotte. But reading about their personalities in the book that I'm currently reading on the Brontes, which I'll show you shortly, as people, I'm liking Emily. No, I'm liking Anne, Charlotte, and then Emily, because Emily's got quite dark. So it's the more I find out about them, the more I'm intrigued. Charlotte was not just because Charlotte wrote the most books, she she was the one that lasted the longest, she lived the longest. She is actually not the, her characteristics, the more I read about the Brontes, I don't think she's as fascinating as Anne. Anne actually had a strength. She was the one that went out to work. She was the one that actually did things. And the more I find out about Anne, the more I love her. And I love her two books. I'm gutted she only, she was the one that died first, then it was Emily, then it was Charlotte. And so I think the more I read about her, she could have had the potential. I think they all died of consumption, but she had the potential to be such... She, she, if she would have, would have written more books, she would have potentially had the potential of being the bar the best of the Brontes. Now I'm going to show you the books of the Brontes that I haven't read and that I want to get to, and the books about the Brontes. So I've got Charlotte's, Bronte, Charlotte's Brontes, the Stancliffe Hotel. I need to read this, but I'm saving this for October because it's my Little Black's Classics edition. It's only 100 pages, but it looks good. I found this. This is a full price book that I found in an actual proper bookshop in Henley. My sister Charlie bought me for my, my Christmas present selected letters of Charlotte Bronte. Charlotte Bronte selected letters. We bought this because we heard about this from Tom from Tom Reed things. This is how Arthur Nichols, Charlotte Bronte's husband for the last nine months of her life, described her letters. Dangerous as Lucifer's matches. This looks intriguing. Again, I'm not sure if I'll save it for Victoria or whether I'll read it before because it looks amazing. Can't wait to get to this. Then for my birthday this year, the lovely Chloe from Chloe Reads Books got me poems by Kura Ellis and Acton Bell. 
they wrote in these were well, in these terms they had anonymouses because they did not it back then it was seen that women couldn't be writers so Kira was Charlotte Ellis was Emily Axon was Anne and these are their poems and I cannot wait to read this I am so grateful for the lovely Chloe from getting to this for giving me this I think it's one I will probably read soon to be honest because it looks beautiful now the books I've got about the Brontes are The Life of Charlotte Bronte by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read that for non-fiction November last year. Thoroughly loved that. Elizabeth Gaskell is one of my authors. She's my project for this year and I'm reading all her books this year. But she was a friend of Charlotte Bronte and she definitely paints Charlotte in a very sweet and loving light. But this book that I'm reading currently with the lovely Tory from Hufflepuff's Discoveries, the Juliet Barker book on the Brontes, I'm halfway through it now and you don't have to see the other sides of them all. You find out more about Bramwell, that their brother that, that we don't know much about. You find out more about Anne and Emily. Emily's definitely the feisty one. She's definitely darker and you can see why she write why she wrote Wuthering Heights because of her darker side. She didn't conform to to, to fashion, she didn't conform to anything. I didn't realise that she went with Charlotte to Brussels. She was there as well. She was there for less time, but she was there. You found out that Anne was the one that actually got the job and moved out and earned herself a living first. So you're finding out more about Anne. You're finding out that Charlotte definitely, now we've been, that's halfway through and we're now meeting the person that she will marry. This is fascinating. It's got pictures, it's beautiful. I love it. Now to me, the Bronte families have got, done so much for literature. They were ahead of their time. They were, yes, they were Victorian literature, Anne broke the boundaries on her book. She she broke the norm. She wrote about things that she wrote about women in a different way. She wrote about the abuse. She really tackled prejudices back then. And that was amazing. Charlotte's book, Jane Eyre, tackled so many things again. It tackled feminism from a very early age. And we've got to be always grateful for, for Charlotte for doing that in Jane Eyre. And her book, the way she tackles the prejudices, the way she tackles disability as well. She really writes quite well. She's a beautiful writer. Jane Eyre will always be one of my favourite books of all time. But other, obviously, Wuthering Heights is the best to me. It's the dark, the gothic. It will always live for me as it, forever as one of the best books ever written. But I love the Brontes. I can't wait to read more about the, them in this book. I need to reread Villette and Shirley because I think I could let and the professor for certain i need to get more about them because the more i find out about charlotte i think re reading it will definitely give me better perspective and i've heard that and i certainly now know rereading classics you get a lot more out of them the more times you read them because you'll pick up things that you don't always in the first time and as you know guys i'm a fast reader so sometimes i skim things and i miss things so i look forward to rereading them but this is why i love victoria this is why i love the brontes and on my birthday month, I wanted to end my birthday month talking about the, fam the family, Victorian author family that I love the most in the world and the person that I'm named after. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel and not subscribed yet, ring on my ding-a-ling and I'll see you all soon. Bye.